crazy early and all my camera angles are really off. Um, later, my pre-recorded nicely edited video today will come out today, which will explain a lot. But at about four o'clock last night, the Joint Council for Qualifications released a well, several very large documents which was advice to the exam boards on how your grades will be determined. And then from this information, the exam boards will determine exactly how, what advice, hello, Smart Revision, um, what advice will be given to schools. So I have it here. I'll put a link. Um, there's a link already on my Twitter. I'll put a link in the description once I like get downstairs. Um, and I mean, the document doesn't start off brilliantly because this is the GCSE grades and then it says for AS and A levels. So, I mean, this isn't a great start to the document, but bless them. You know, they decided to release it at four o'clock on the last day of term for most people. I know some people still have school next week, um, which is just a really sucky, sucky thing to do. Anyway, we start off with um, the saying that this is what the Joint Council for Qualifications has decided. They're going to send this out to the examples and then the examples themselves will work on this. And on the 19th of April, so that's what, three weeks time, the examples themselves will release exact, specific, uh, exact advice relating to that particular exam specification, which your schools and teachers will use to give you your grades. Now, this um, document talks all about grade descriptors and um, holistic judgment. So for those of you that don't know what holistic judgment is, it's kind of like, um, I don't really want to call it hand wavy because obviously some thought goes into it, but it's kind of like, mm, this one feels like a seven to me. This one feels like an eight to me. And what they've done is in an incredibly long document, 91 pages, released grade descriptors for every single grade and every single subject, which is interesting. Let me just go to maths. Um, it is interesting because there has never been grade descriptors before. Um, the examples, you know, all the people at the examples I took to, who are mainly just maths and science people, are always kind of like, there is no grade nine question, there is no grade four question, there is no A star question, there is no C question, you just need to get the marks. You know, if you get a mark on, if you get, you know, like four marks on this question, it's not worth four marks on this question. It's not as if you get four marks on a grade five question, that's not worth as much as getting four marks on a grade nine question. Four marks is four marks. And the examples, the people I've spoken to, have always been very adamant. To get a grade seven, you need to get that many marks. You don't need to get the grade this particular question right. You don't need to get this particular question right. It's not as if you need to get this far through the paper and stop. They've always been very clear and very adamant that there are no grade descriptors. There are no, um, like, level six um like grade six questions there are no a star questions questions are questions and you just need to get as many many right as you can to get the marks but they have now the j um qc jcq has now released grade descriptors which is something that you know we as teachers have never had before we've never had to work with these before and these are incredibly long documents so what I'll show you maths because lots of people do maths. Here it is. And you can see for grade nine, you have to do this. Grade eight, you have to do this. And it goes all the way down. So we're going to start at the bottom and work our way up. So grade one, you have to have some credit across elements of the specification. Okay, that's really hand waving, wishy washy. Grade two, recall, interpret, solve problems, basic evaluation. Lovely. Um, grade three, then it has characteristics different to grade three from grade four. This is good information. And then we go up and it says a few things. Then it has the information here for a grade six. So to perform um, 
um, single and multi-step procedures, interpret and communicate information effectively, make deductions, construct trains of reasoning, general strategies to solve mathematical and non-mathematical problems. Now, you do have to wonder why they're putting non-mathematical problems into a maths paper, but apparently they are. Um, and then a few other things to read over six. Now, this is the bit that is really annoying. That's me putting it uh, politely. To retrieve a grade seven, students' evidence will show they have securely met all of the statements within the grade six descriptor with a stronger performance in most or all aspects of the grade six statements. However, their evidence does not meet the minimum requirements for most of the grade eight statements so this is kind of like to get grade seven you have to do everything that a grade six can do but better and it's the same for eight and nine there's a list of things that you need to do to get a grade eight and to get a grade nine to a grade chief grade nine students evidence will show they have securely met all of the statements within the grade eight descriptor with a stronger performance in all or most so to get a grade eight or grade six or whichever grade you have to do everything in this box but if you do it better than doing everything in the box, you get a grade nine. That's literally not the same. And yes, A level is basically exactly the same. Um, this document uh, is on the JCQ's website. The um, examples themselves are going to go through and produce detailed specifications for this when they get it and that's going to be released on the 19th but if we're thinking about the difference between a grade 8 and a grade 9 or an A and an A star for A level um because this is a holistic judgment if we're thinking about Bake Off okay everyone in Bake Off can make cakes Okay, so they can all probably tick everything for a grade eight. They can make cakes. And then to get like to win Bake Off, somebody makes better cakes. But people's judgment on who makes a better cake, well, that's not always the same. No, everyone has their favourites of Bake Off. Or if we want to think about it in terms of cocktails or martinis, which I quite like drinking way, way back when with my friends you know I would go out for cocktails and my husband would have a classic martini like, like Bond used to drink um nothing fancy about there then my other friend would have um an espresso martini now I'm not a fan of crossing martinis I'm gonna sneeze I'm really sorry this is live this is why I don't generally do lives I don't know gone. but I'm not a fan of classic martinis because they're just a little bit too alcoholic for me i'm not a fan of um espresso martinis because i don't really like drinking coffee that late at night however i do kind of like passion fruit martinis because they're pink and they're just a little bit fruity all of them tick all the boxes for being martini but we all have different judgments on which which is the best so this holistic hand wavy this is a grade eight and this is a grade nine Oh, it's doing my head in. And yes, <sighs> it's doing my head in. I'm sure it's doing your teacher's head in and everyone's head in. But this was released late last night, you know, just when students, teachers should have been allowed to start relaxing for the Easter holidays. But lots of massive documents were dumped, um, not dumped, released probably the better term for it, um, late last night. These are going to go to the exam boards who are going to release um, kind of like exact ones for their specification and their subjects so that each school doesn't have to interpret different subjects um, like slightly differently. Um, and then your school will interpret that and decide exactly what evidence you are going to need to provide, what kind of like exams they're going to give you, where they're going to test you, um, and then after Easter, the exam boards are going to be releasing the um, questions and answers for the, the exam board externally set assessments. Um, so that is what happened yesterday, late last night, yesterday, just I was kind of like 
kicking back and starting to relax these the holidays. I had to sit there and trawl through a load of really, really fun and exciting documents. Um, do you know my stickers? I don't know something. Um, anyway, guys, um, I've got a video, like an actual proper video that I recorded. Quick overview. There was a really big document released last night about grade descriptors for each subject, what you need to do for GCSE and A level. It's 90 odd pages long. And this is only one of the documents that they released last night. It will get translated in English by the exam boards, who will then give it to your teachers, who should then translate it to um, something that you can understand and work towards. However, you know, if you wanted to take this over the whole days and, uh, you know, work on interpreting results within the context of a given question, and then go back to a school and say, look, miss, I've done a load of work interpreting the results of context in a given question, um, that, that is what you could do. Anyway, guys, um, I'm going to give you a task for today, which is to get outside and enjoy the, the sunshine and the fresh air. I wouldn't actually read the document, it's really, really long. Um, I don't know whether it applies for international GCs and international A-levels because... I don't know whether JCQ covers those or not. Um, I just need to go downstairs and finish a thumbnail for the video that was will be going out today. And then there's the D year 11, D year 10, D year 12, D year 13 videos coming out tomorrow. And things are going to be slowly getting back to normal. I promise, guys, I've been in a massive funk, but I've started to do a few fun things like these. And they are slowly directing me at my funk so I can... Um, Get back to normal for you. Um, right, I'm gonna go and uh tidy the garden because it's a mess. 